We got an exciting show for y'all today here on Dollars and Cents, where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your dollars. One of Central Florida's longest running radio programs, also one of the top 25 financial planning podcasts. If you'd like, you can also see us doing the show on our YouTube channel. Although this week it may look a little different, well, for couple of reasons. First of all, I get the pleasure of Rob Field joining me on the program today. Good morning, Rob. How are you? Morning, Joel. Thanks for having me on. Always fun to share some ideas and concepts with our listeners. You get, did a show, I think it was almost a year ago, and and we're really going to kind of circle back to some of the concepts that we talked about on, this, on that show, because it really does bear further discussion but if you if you're if you're watching us on the youtube channel you know that both rob and i look a little scruffier than normal although some might say that we look a little scruffy every day but uh <laughs> we're, we're a little scruffier than normal uh here at the office uh and if you saw this past week on um facebook uh jamie put up a picture of the gentleman in the office participating in no shave november uh, certainly a, 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 a worthy uh, a worthy cause, that's for sure. Obviously so. It brings awareness to various things involved with men, not just necessarily cancer, but your, your mental aspect, the emotional aspect, and just sort of brings it to light. Been, a, been an event of sorts that's been around for several years now, sort of a playoff of how October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month for that has kind of a more of a, of a female focus, November, kind of that men's focus. So we'll take the time to say, hey, guys, if you haven't been and gotten a checkup lately, you really should, because if you find something, it's better to fix it sooner rather than later. True. Not exactly a medical doctor, but, I mean, that's what I read on Google, so that makes me half an expert, I suppose. And on the lighter <laughs> side, if you need an excuse to not shave, you want to share that with your wife or your girlfriend and say, oh, you know, I've, I'm, it's a very important cause and I'm going to represent it. I like the idea of growing a little scraggle, something different. It's something different, but my wife is not a fan, so uh, <laughs> I, I don't know uh, if I'll uh, get much through or through November, but if you check out the YouTube channel, Nelson Financial Planning, you'll you'll see it. So wh one of the things that I thought was intriguing about our, our topic today, Rob, was it, it was a statistic that I, that I that I shared with our listening audience a couple of weeks ago. And I'm going to take a moment right at the top here to share that. And, and here's what it is. And this is a, this is a survey courtesy of Retirement Coaches Association. And I'm just going to read it and, and then have, have uh, us digest it and, and you as well, the listening audience, digest it as well. So while most Americans will cite inadequate savings as a concern for their future retirement, a recent survey found that for recent retirees currently struggling in retirement, other issues like a loss of identity – identified by 53% of the respondents, a lack of routine identified by 32% of the respondents, a lack of friends identified by 24% of the respondents, a lack of community identified by 18% of the respondents, all ranked well ahead of financial difficulties, which was only mentioned by 10% of the respondents in terms of causing problems or causing issues in terms of, of just that physical and, and emotional and mental well-being. It's just kind of an interesting piece of the conversation, Rob, that I don't think we, we, we hear a lot of conversation about. It is funny because you think, okay, retirement planning, investments, that's that's the only two things you really need to think about. But obviously that study tells you that uh, people's thoughts, it really isn't on just, you know, how am I going to spend my money in retirement, but how am I going to spend my time in retirement? Well, and it certainly just underscores, I mean, it, no question, you got to have the, you got to have the numbers in order to, 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 to retire. But if you're, if you're really solely focused on that. We, we are just seeing more and more where we start to look at some of these surveys, so start to look at some of the some of the data that is getting run out, out, out there. Just 
how important it, it is to make sure that you really are looking at that that whole picture. We certainly say all the times, all the all the time around the office and here on the program. You know, it's important to run the numbers, right? You gotta sure. know what you got and know where the income's coming from. But um, it's really so much more than that. It really is. I mean, if you think about, um, you know, the numbers pop up kind of naturally, but there's really three other categories that you kind of want to address when you're thinking in the bigger picture of retirement. Part of it's going to be the social aspect, uh, certainly going to be, you know, your health and and how you're going to address that. And then more so, how do you want to be remembered? What would be your legacy as you head through retirement? Well, and those are certainly all very important issues because if any one of those isn't working, then as as that survey that we were talking about earlier says, it it can really be a much greater concern or a much greater source of worry in retirement, uh, far, far more potentially than uh, than than your finances. So, uh, so that'll be kind of the, the the topic that we'll be breaking down on the program today. Uh, my name is Joel Garris. I'm a certified financial planner and certified financial fiduciary at Nelson Financial Planning. As I said at the top of the show, joining me this week is a fellow certified financial fiduciary, Rob Field. Also happens to be a national social security advisor. So, uh, certainly one of those things that's important in retirement is uh, knowing what to do about that uh, little social security thing, isn't it? Of course. We're, we're big and we talk a lot about kind of coordinating your investments with your house and your social security and all of your goals. Social security is something everybody has access to. And if you use it efficiently, it can be very effective. If you don't pay attention, you might miss out on some opportunities. And we're certainly going to be talking a little bit about that, what what the importance of knowing what your FRA or your full retirement age is all about. Uh, of course, this week as well, let's not forget Thanksgiving coming up. You got any uh, any particular plans, Rob? Certainly. It always involves eating. That's one of my favorite things to do. I've got uh, my son and his fiance live in town. He and I and her and some other friends and a few more family members, we're all going to go to one house and everybody's going to bring some things and we're just going to spend hours and hours you know, either looking at sports or eating some food. I myself, not much of a chef, but I am going to bring uh, honey baked ham. Okay. And then a couple of pies. That sounds good. And yeah, that's very exciting. That sounds very good. We're doing about the same. We got to cast a crew. All the boys are coming into town, so that's good. I think uh, it's a limited window. I think uh, Nelson's probably in for about forty-eight hours, but that's okay. It still counts. Uh, we'll we'll play with um, we'll play with gas and oil. Okay, something <laughs> that we do uh, every Thanksgiving when we uh, fry a turkey. So that should be fun, and certainly one. I want to wish all of our listeners that they have a very happy Thanksgiving as well. You know, when you get together with family, you never know what's going to happen. So I thought I would take a moment and just give you a, a, a suggestion of what not to talk about and something you could talk about. So what do you think is something that you probably shouldn't talk about with people at Thanksgiving amongst the, 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 the family? I'm sure the list has a few, but I certainly would avoid politics. Probably that's a good one to avoid, but you can also talk about the latest book that has been published, courtesy of me. We're holding it up for the cameras here on YouTube. Next Gen Dollars and Cents. Talk about a great conversation starter at Thanksgiving, right? I guess maybe not, because what's the other thing that you want to talk about besides politics? It's finances. But Mm -hmm. this book is meant to educate you. And remember, it's free just for the asking. Simply go to our website, nelsonfinancialplanning.com, and it is free until December 31. After that, in the new year, you're going to have to go to Amazon, and those guys are selling it for $14.99. So... We think about retirement and we think about retirement and and what the research is showing is that retirees are really going through almost a a sort of a quasi midlife crisis. And that's kind of where we want to start this conversation to really kind of get into the details on what that involves. So stay tuned with us through the break. Coming up next here on Dollars and Cents with Joel Garrison, Rob field of Nelson Financial Planning. So new research shows that retirees, particularly recent retirees, are struggling with 
much more issues than just the finances. And I think, Rob, in the last segment, you, you kind of laid out those, those major categories, social and, and lifestyle and, and, and legacy, that actually appear to be perhaps more traumatic even uh, than, than, than kind of the financial aspect of retirement. So we thought around the Thanksgiving holiday here that it might be an interesting topic to kind of, you know, uh, during Thanksgiving, you wind up having usually a little bit more time. Certainly uh, Thursday is the holiday. Most businesses are closed on Friday as well. We've got kind of a skeleton crew in on Friday because the markets are still open for half a day on Friday. But you find yourself with a little bit more time maybe you use some of that time to sort of reflect and if you're approaching retirement new research shows that retirees almost go through a, a sort of all of a sudden sort of a, a quasi midlife crisis i think i'm going to refer to it as sort of a a, a tri life crisis uh <laughs> because it kind of occurs in that in that back third um but 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 uh yeah that notion of of retirees going through a midlife crisis is one of those things that sort of you're starting to hear a little bit more of as some of this research and data comes uh, comes out. I know for my midlife crisis, I probably started running marathons, which is kind of a weird uh, mid, mid midlife crisis. Uh, I decided that I you know wanted to kind of get in better shape, so kind of uh, did the opposite. Rob, uh, have have you experienced your midlife crisis yet? What, what was yeah, what I, was yours? I've, I've had a few. Yours is a little more healthier than mine. I just resorted back to the traditional bought a motorcycle <laughs> last year, hop on it, take uh, rides, think I'm you know a young kid uh, riding around on my body <laughs> but you know here's the reality of it if you're the typical retiree right at age 65 then you've got a lot of years left and, and i mean you got anywhere from 20 to 25 to 30 years that's why it almost this concept that i like to describe it as you're going to have a tri-life crisis in that because you still have a third of your life in in mathematically still in front of you and it, it, it's certainly a time where a lot of retirees view it as sort of a, a, a reimagining their identity. What can they do with their time that they might not have been able to do when they were working? You know, is there you know some opportunity? Is there some transformation that you know that that they that they want to do? And, and so the question that we want to raise on the program this week is, you know, how do you make the most of that? Because clearly when you start talking about your social or your health or your legacy, uh, that that's that doesn't necessarily have a whole lot to do with the financials. So Rob, where, where, where does it kind of start for, for, for folks on this journey? Well, certainly you can tell it's going to start, you know, more than just the financial piece. And I think when you look back, a lot of times when people hit retirement age, um, you know, the next few years, their health wasn't as strong. They weren't going to live as long. They weren't putting as much emphasis on what am I going to do for the next few years? It was really, I'm glad to be winding down. I, I think really, you know, it, it, it starts with kind of you know, in retirement planning, thinking of the social part, because you're not going to be spending more time with people. It starts about life planning, because you're going to have more years in which you will be doing some things, and you're not, you don't want to sit around idle. Obviously, from the studies we've seen, people want to be active if possible. So I think it's, you know, it's that planning perspective that's involved with the social side. Really almost as, we were, as I was saying a little bit earlier, you know, it's a time of reflection, right, where you want to kind of take stock of what's important to you, you know what what how do you want to spend your time because now you get to decide that, that that's the beauty of retirement that's that's the allure if you will is you get to decide what you are going to do with your time because you no longer have to clock in at at from nine to five although probably most people don't clock in nine to five anymore but um but uh you you get the opportunity to decide what you want to do uh and 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 that's important very it it, it is important to sort of kind of think of that transaction and moving on and, and sort of reviewing things that are important to you and maybe things that aren't as important because there's only so many hours in a day. So we, we kind of talk about steps you can take to kind of plan how you want to divide things up. And we kind of use that, what we call a five and five exercise, which is where you're going to just list five things that you would like to do more. You're going to make a list of five things that you prefer not to do as much. You'd like to do less and kind of, you know, what's more meaningful to you, what's less meaningful um, and the concept being, if you can weed out some things that just aren't as meaningful to you, free up some time to do more things that are meaningful to you, things that are important, 
it's going to bring, it's going to make you happy. It's going to help you kind of do more of what you want, be a little more, have more pleasure in your retirement time. Well, and I think that's a great exercise, and I want to hone in on that a little bit, Rob, because, you know, all too often we talk about the financial side, and, oh, create a budget and figure out where the income's coming from, and uh, don't get me wrong, that is crucially, crucially important. But, you know, the exercise of, of sitting down and saying, and reflecting and saying, okay, what do I want this next third of my life to, to, to be and to do and to look like? So that exercise you mentioned, that, that's a great exercise for folks to do as they think about retirement, whether they're still a few years away or whether they're about ready to go into retirement or whether they're in retirement, to just think about what are those five things that I want to do more of that are most meaningful to me? And then what are those five things that I want to do less of that are just kind of less fulfilling? And I don't really want to want to want to do that. Uh, and, and I think that will reveal a lot as to what you need to do in retirement in order to have a, a, a happy and satisfied and successful retirement. Because another thing that people often cite or, or, or worry about when it comes to retirement is is the notion of 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 structure and you know when you think about structure my goodness when we're working rob right i mean there's a there's a flow to the day there's a flow to the week there's a flow to the year certainly at the office there there's uh there's there's that flow uh, that we see each and every each and every year around here well sure okay so, i mean for myself i get to work around the same time i'm doing the checking some certain things every day from the previous day that I'm looking at what's going to happen. We have a, a, a meeting here in the office every day in which we're kind of uh, analyzing out and predicting what we're going to do. And then uh, as the market is moving around, that influences us. We're placing trades within market time. So it's very structured. Yeah. And, and then becomes a question of, okay, well, am I going to completely redo my day in retirement or am I going to maybe expand some of the current routines and things like that? You know, I'm certainly a big fan of, of lists. I know you are a big fan of tasks and, right. and sort of checking them off. I, I'm kind of old school. I, I still have like a little, a little index card. Okay. Um, that I actually, interestingly, um, Learned from my father-in-law, Jack Nelson. He always used to do an index card, um, and it was back in the days before cell phones. So the office would have to write out his schedule for the day on an index card. It was always yellow, so that way he could always kind of see it quickly. And um, so that was how he kind of kept track of his his schedule. I have I have adopted that. Although I don't have them put my schedule on it because I have my phone. I can look at that. But uh, just in terms of the to dos and, and things like that. So it's important to kind of get a handle on exactly what a day in the life in retirement is going to look like. That's for sure. Right. I mean, you want to think about that schedule, what you're going to do, but you also want to take some time and think about, you know, who are you going to do some things with? Right. Where, who are you going to spend some time? Um, it's going to be friends. So, you know, you want to keep up with your friends. Maybe you have more time for your friends, which would be great. Maybe you're active in your church. And so now instead of just going to church on Sunday, you can do some things with your, your, your fellow church members throughout the week. Obviously family, you, you know, you want to spend more time with your family, especially grandkids. Um, you know, you might have more time now to catch some of the events they do. The problem with family and the grandkids is that they're still working. So right. you can't count on them just because you now have some free time doesn't mean that they can suddenly join you on all your little excursions that you're planning. And they usually have their own agenda as well. Well, true. I mean, <laughs> grandkids like you in, in small dosages. Too much of grandma, grandpa suddenly isn't as fun. <laughs> Well, and I guess the other thing to, remember, to to consider is, you know, when you retire, you you are losing out on perhaps one of the biggest groups of individuals that you deal with on a daily basis, and 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 that's your coworkers because you don't have coworkers in retirement that you see every day versus uh, around here. I see you every day and Christina and Kristen and the, and the, and the, and the rest of the rest of the crew. So certainly something to be thinking about in terms of what that social aspect of your retirement is going to look like. We're going to slide to a break and when we return, we're going to talk about the next two categories that Rob mentioned earlier uh, involving health and legacy. So stay with us through the break here on Dollars and Cents with Joel Garris and Rob Field of Nelson Financial Planning. 
So we're talking this week on dollars and cents about some of the other things that you might want to consider as you're approaching retirement or if you're in retirement. Things that, according to some of the most recent surveys and data out there, suggest are far more important than just having an understanding of the financials. Don't get me wrong on what we're talking about. The financials and understanding your investments and your income in retirement will always be of the utmost importance. Because after all, you can't really retire if you don't have the numbers and the money to do so. But what a lot of the surveys are showing involving recent retirees is sort of a a lost identity, a a, a kind of a lost social interaction, uh, concerns over what they're going to do, and all of that leads to a multitude of of other issues. So on this week's program here on Dollars and Cents, I'm joined uh, with uh, on the program today with fellow certified financial fiduciary, uh, also a national social security advisor, Rob Field, part of the team at Nelson Financial Planning. We've been together, you've been on the team for what, almost a decade? Coming up on 10 years. Coming up on 10 years. Well, that is fantastic. Uh, next year, I myself will hit my 25th year here at Nelson Financial Planning. And as a firm, uh, and, you, and you're going to hear a lot more about this. In, drum roll. Yes, drum roll. I think one of these buttons on that board <laughs> does the drum roll thing. It's like a rim. Here we go. There we go. There's the rim shot. Uh, 40th anniversary of Nelson Financial Planning next year. We're going to be talking a lot more about that. But this week on the program, we're talking about sort of what I've coined as the tri-life crisis. And, And that simply recognizes that when you're retiring at 65, you got a pretty good shot at live in another 25-ish years. So you still have a third of your life left to do. What does that look like? And what do you want to do about that? Because for a lot of modern retirees, it really is sort of reimagining what your life could be in that sort of last third of, of, of your life. And certainly it, it's some pretty interesting uh, data and statistics and, and exercises that I think uh, folks close to retirement, Rob, can, uh, can certainly engage in. Right. I think we're st- what we're starting to see here, kind of the theme is that although finances aren't the most important part of retirement, a lot of these things we talk about being social, getting out, traveling, being with family does require your finances to be in place. So we certainly want to make sure that we touch upon that. But what makes the what makes retirement successful, what makes retirees happy is not is really not the money part. It's it's the social staying healthy uh, with modern medicine. They're going to be living longer and longer. And that's why it's not view. We don't view retirement as like, oh, it's that last little twilight. It's actually another third of your life. And so. Uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, how do you address the, the health and wellness? And then later on, we're going to talk a little bit about your legacy and how do you want to be remembered? And so, um, you know, we, we know that, that it's an important factor of retirement is to stay healthy. Because if, you, if, if you're, even if you got a huge amount of retirement saved, but you can't get around, you're going to be miserable. So, you know, statistically, people are living longer. Uh, general health, the U.S. population can be improving. Again, we've got a great medical system. Uh, so thanks to this modern medicine and, and more information we have on healthcare, obviously the internet is providing people with all kinds of things to learn about how to live a healthier, uh, a healthier life. You're going to spend more years than you used to in what I would call post-work activities, things you're going to truly do in retirement. Uh, and how healthy you are will determine what you can do. Yeah, no, uh, no question. It goes, and I guess this really the the, the point of the, this week's program is to really talk about the importance of the quality of, of that retirement, and, and and quality meaning more than just having my financial house in order, but what does that social aspect look like? You you mentioned uh, early in the program that exercise, and I would really encourage everybody who's who's close to retirement or at retirement to do this exercise. Write down, take a moment, get a sheet of paper, get a pencil, write down the five things that are most important to you, 
and the five things that are least important, those things that are most meaningful, those things that are least fulfilling, that will help guide you as to what you're going to do from more of a social perspective. But, but certainly, Rob, as you're talking about in this segment, that, that health is pretty important because if you're going to have a, another third to go of life, then you want to make sure you're in decent health to be able to enjoy that. So, so that talks, that gets into all of those other things about, you know, eating right and exercising and sleeping and good mental health and all of those kinds of things that um, you want to make sure that you're working on a, a, along the way to have that quality retirement. Well, certainly. I mean, we want the bottom line to be, you know, living longer. And so thus, let's improve the quality of your life as you're going along. You mentioned a, a variety of things. There's three topics we're going to talk about over the next segment or so. And that's going to be the mental physical health, uh, how to manage your health care, and then how to, how to address unexpected medical costs. Some of those items you just mentioned, eating, you know, that's a, you're, eat, people don't realize this, but, you know, most people when you're working, get up, quick little breakfast, you head to work eat lunch around the same time. Usually you bring in your lunch. You come home, you eat dinner around the same time. It's a, it's a cycle that goes around and around and around. When you are not working, you can skip breakfast or eat a big breakfast or have a light lunch or go meet people for dinner or go out to dinner or start cooking more. Uh, the exercise portion, uh, very important. A lot of people find that it's harder to exercise when they retire because they have too much time and to, to try to figure it out. When you're working, you get home, it's like, great time to work out, or you get up early, great time to work out. When you can make your own schedule, sometimes exercise drops. So important, that routine. And, and I guess, Rob, to your point, you know, when you're working, you've got the routine, and that's the routine, and that's what you're doing. You know, we've got a, a, a client who's been retired for a number of years now, and he really leaned into being more active and, and, and exercising. And, you know, I was just talking with him just, just this past week, and you know what he, he told me? He had just turned 60, and he had just competed in a, a highly elite cycling uh, event, uh, and, and he, was the, he was the first place American. And this wasn't a, a, like a senior event. This was an event with folks of all ages. So it can be done, uh, and it's great to hear those stories that our clients share with us about what they are doing to, to stay healthy. That is for sure. Now, you mentioned the next topic uh, or the next piece of this health and wellness is really more about, of course, managing your health care plan and your health insurance and how all of that, that plays out. So I guess that gets us into a little bit of a conversation about Medicare then. Sure, because you're, as you transition from work where you probably got your, your medical insurance over to retirement, you may or may not have access to that insurance. Obviously, Medicare is kind of a is a big topic because everybody qualifies for it at age 65. So we really, you know, that's kind of that magic number you and I always talk about sure. with clients and prospects is 65 because before 65, Medicare would not be available. And so at that point, you're going to have to pay for some insurance out of your own pocket. Uh, typically, you know, medical insurance for husband and a wife is in the thousand dollar range. People don't, don't realize that because sometimes the company's paying the majority of their medical premium um, certainly, you could look at COBRA if you left your company and they offered you to keep that medical insurance. Still going to be a lot more expensive than what you were using before. Um, certainly, you don't want to self-insure. That's a, that's a gamble that right. it, as you start getting your 60s and 70s, you're going to have medical costs. You don't want to just pay that all out of your pocket. But at 65, once you hit 65, you're available for Medicare. You've already been paying taxes in. So Part A, which is what we call the hospitalization, you've already paid for that. You already get it. So you should certainly go online, get your Medicare card, and have that. Part B is required by Medicare that you have some type of coverage for Part B, which is basically the doctor side. So if you were under 65 and working, you could certainly, uh, or, or even if you were 66 and 67 and still working, you could still use the, the medical insurance at work. But if it's 65, you're not working, you got to pay for the Part B. It's about $170 a month. And that kind of gives you your, your normal Medicare setup, Part A for hospital, Part B for the doctor. If prescription drugs becomes an issue, that can be expensive. Medicare doesn't cover that directly, but there are supplemental plans 
that affect what we call Part D. And of course, there's Medicare Advantage plans. It takes A, B, and D and combines it all together. It's something you should research and obviously something we'd be glad to advise on. And certainly, you know, that, that age 65 and whether you're before it or after it, that, that that's pretty crucial because the 65 is, is Medicare, which is different than some of the ages for full retirement under Social Security. Well, we're going to talk more about that piece, but we got to take a break and get some messages in here. So stay tuned for uh, the last segment of Dollars and Cents with uh, Joel Garrison, Rob Field of Nelson Financial Planning. Well, we hope that you have a good Thanksgiving holiday. We are coming to you on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, so we've got that good holiday to look forward to. Early in the program, Rob and I shared with you some of our Thanksgiving plans. We hope and trust that you have an enjoyable one as well, and more importantly, travel safely out there. I was noticing some of the reports at the end of the week that we're already talking about about how much traffic was building up. That is for sure already with folks trying to get from one location to the next. Uh, also, this time of year marks uh, the beginning of our, well, actually, we started back uh, on November 17th. But at the office, uh, we do every year a toy and food drive. I'm holding that up now for the camera for uh, our YouTube audience. Our toy and food drive runs from uh, uh, November 7th to December 8th. Uh, if you'd like to support Second Harvest Food Bank or Toys for Tots, we are, in fact, a collection site for both of those organizations between now and December 8th. So, and we certainly thank you for those to those that have participated in the program. By the way, this program, of course, is called actually Dollars and Cents, where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your dollars. One of Central Florida's longest running radio programs, coming to you on a host of stations throughout the Central Florida region, also one of the top 25 financial planning podcasts on the World Wide Web. Don't forget to take advantage of our free offer that we're providing between now and the end of the year. It is a free copy, free hard copy of our most recent book, Next Gen Dollars and Cents, where we uh, talk to you about the essential tools and strategies to learn, organize, and ultimately achieve financial success. So we encourage you to call the office at 407-629-6477 or visit our website, nelsonfinancialplanning.com to request your complimentary copy of that book. My name, of course, is Joel Garris. I'm a certified financial planner, certified financial fiduciary at Nelson Financial Planning. Joining me on this week's program is one of our fellow certified financial fiduciaries at Nelson Financial Planning. Rob Field also happens to be a National Social Security Advisor. Rob, it's been an interesting show, and hopefully our listeners have found that as well, as we talk about some of these other things that go into that holistic perspective about retirement. And certainly, first and foremost, can't forget about the financial side, right? It's got to be the right numbers in order to be able to retire. But there's other things that we've been talking about that are perhaps important from a quality perspective in terms of how you're going to have that retirement. Of course. I mean, we, we're always happy to talk about the financial side. It does start there as far as just having that nucleus of, uh, of your finances in place, but then it just broadens out so quickly to be successful in retirement, to be happy in retirement involves your health and your ability to socialize and then goals that you have of how you might want to move your money to the next generation. And so those are just as important. And we're trying to take the time to remind people Think the big picture, and uh, it, it should lead to a little more comfortable retirement, a little happier retirement. And certainly, this week coming up, usually a, a week where people have a little bit more, a little bit more time in their schedules to think and reflect. So, if you're at retirement or approaching retirement, certainly, hopefully, we've given you some food for thought. Before the break, uh, we were talking a little bit about the importance of age 65. That's certainly very important when we talk about. Uh, Medicare and Medicare eligibility, but not to be confused with your full retirement age because that doesn't, isn't 65. Uh, it, for most people, it is uh, 67. So very different perspective to be, to be thinking about. 
Sure. I mean, with Medicare 65 is everybody at 65, whether you're working or not, qualifies for Part A, you've paid into it. You should certainly take advantage at line and, and sign up for it. Full retirement age is back to the Social Security side in which at, at what point are you eligible to work and collect Social Security and not have Social Security reduced? Uh, and full retirement age is also sort of the, the first number Social Security uses to decide what your benefit amount would be. You start there. You discount that number. If you're taking it earlier than full retirement age, it goes up to age 70. You get to increase the amount. So one of the biggest things involving health and, and, and wellness and, and, and physical well-being is, is, is the cost associated with keeping yourself healthy. We were talking before the break about, about health insurance. You know, when it comes to unexpected expenses, there's a couple of ways in which people can sort of plan for those, Rob. And, and you had a couple of thoughts on kind of what, uh, what that potentially uh, might, might include. Correct. We, you know, we talked about the fact of knowing that you're going to need some type of medical insurance, and that's going to cost money. And we kind of talked about the, it's Medicare or if you can get it through work or if you can get COBRA. But there's still unexpected, even if you plan ahead and have an insurance policy, there's still unexpected costs that can pop up, and that can affect your budget. That can dig into your finances, so you want to be aware of that. Three items that we consider would be you know, a, a health savings account that you could be using now while you're at work. There are medical and Medicare supplement plans. Even if you're on Medicare, you can kind of beef it up with a little something extra. There is long-term care insurance. So, go ahead. Certainly, well, no, certainly uh, some good options there. Um, I think I think the, 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 the best one that's out there that unfortunately not that many people know about is a health savings account. Right. Uh, that, that really is a very valuable uh, account and a very valuable opportunity to be able to have one of those. And you want to know about that now while you're still working. Right. Because you want to contribute to that. Uh, get the get the pre-tax uh, um, basis of it and, and the advantage of doing so, build it up, and then you can use that at some point to, you know, help reduce the deductibles and other things you might be doing, right. co-insurance, co-pays with the doctor. Well, and the key thing that everybody sort of forgets on a health savings account is that it's not, it's not a use it or lose it. So the money that you put into a health savings account, I mean, it, it's one of the most powerful options that you have. It, it really is a, is a triple threat in terms of being able to save on your taxes. Because you, when you put the money in, it's tax deductible. As the money sits there, it's growing tax deferred. And when you take it out and use it, use it for medical expenses, it's tax free. I mean, it doesn't get better than that in terms of an, an account that can be earmarked specifically for your medical expenses and you get to carry it forward uh, for, for forever, really, uh, well into retirement. Right. That's the way we get a lot of clients who come in and say, oh, I have an HSA, but I won't. I won't qualify to use it anymore once I retire. And the answer is, can't put new money in, right. but you have built it up over this time, and you can still use it and pull money out for all of these different uh, examples that we said. So that's why it's important to, if you get close to retirement, don't get scared and, and back away or shy away from your HSA. Keep adding to it as you can. There's a lot of tax benefits as well as it, as Joel mentioned. It will carry over. You can still use it for medical expenses year after year after year, even when you are retired. Well, and I think certainly we'll probably see more of that as you as a lot of employers continue to sort of struggle against the cost of, of insurance to the extent that, you know, you as an employer want to provide a, a, a health insurance benefit to your employees. I know at, um, at our office, we, we try and do that. And the reality is that, uh, the HSA is is really becoming much more of an option for uh, for folks because it, it does allow you to have a high deductible health insurance policy. That's the key piece of, of the type of health insurance policy that you need, and, and then uh, w then you're funding the HSA. Uh, along the way, uh, my son just started working. Uh, got got off the payroll recently, so that's <laughs> good. Working full time, getting his own health and benefits, and he's got an HSA option. I said, my goodness, if you can start at at 22 years of age and and you know put a hundred dollars a month into this HSA and and you know should be relatively healthy. You're a young guy. Uh, that that's going to be a pretty powerful thing to see, and that's not something that was around to the typical 20 year old. Uh, 
uh, you know, back 30-odd years ago because an HSA is a relatively new vehicle. Sure. So interesting stuff indeed. Well, my goodness, uh, we still got to talk about the legacy side of this, <laughs> but we're completely out of time uh, for this week's episode. So, Rob, uh, how about joining me for the next week? Sounds good. All right, we'll do that. Uh, we'll talk about the legacy side of how you want to plan your retirement as well. And then I suppose, since this is a financial talk show, we'll talk about the financial, some of the financial nuances as well that folks need to be prepared for when it comes to retirement or approaching retirement. So with that, we will wrap it on up and get on out of here. Thank you for listening to this week's program. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. This has been Dollars and Cents with Joel Garris, Rob Field of Nelson Financial Planning.